Scratch it up, Chooks. Well, that's the Chooks fed. Um, so today's little job, it's not a little job, but we're gonna to have to start dropping some trees. If you have a look at the garden um, now, the, the sun's just starting to show and you can see it's quite shady and it won't really be out of the shade till about midday, so we need more sun there. So we're gonna just go, um, there's a few trees here that my little bar um, can handle, so we'll drop it. We'll start dropping out a few of those, but we won't drop them all at once just because we'll have a massive pile, so we'll have to drop them, trim them up and everything and, and put them aside. So we'll start with that. We've got a tree today that's got quite a heavy lean on it, and I might um, I might start with that because it's actually a bit of a, a bit more challenging than just not dropping a normal tree. So these trees here are blue gums, um, except this. We've got a cork oak here, which is kind of an interesting tree. That tree is also pretty big, and I might actually get a um, help with someone with a bigger saw to actually drop that. This tree unfortunately wants to come this way, all of its weight is here. Um, and we could we could drop that tree in here, but it just it'd be quite a bit of work dragging stuff out, so we'll have to think about it. But there is another little blue gum in there that we can easily drop that way, but we have to take another tree out there. But now the sun is up and our garden is still in shade, so we'd like to do something about that. These blue gums as well, we want to take out more of them on the property because they just suck a huge amount of water. Um, out of the ground. There was a big swamp south of Rome and when Mussolini wanted to drain them he used these trees. <laughs> so they put a huge amount of litter down, they suppress whatever's growing underneath them, they pull a lot of nutrients out of the ground, a lot of water um, and get rid of it. They grow to 50 meters tall, they do not belong here on a small farm and they don't belong here anyway, they're not native. They come from the eastern side of the country so we're going to have to get rid of them. Already with yesterday's work of um, dropping some of these smaller ones, it's really it's really opened up this area. Like this was quite shady in the mornings as it was, but even just chopping out those little suckers and, and the small seedlings that are growing everywhere has made a big difference. Ooh, I can feel it coming through. Mm -hmm. All of this was sort of blocked yesterday, so it's a good start. We need to drop what trees we're going to before we put in any fence. Yeah. So, can't do the fencing until one, two, three, four, five, six, six trees. We might leave like the two biggest ones there and we'll just take out those little ones. But that'll, that'll be a, I reckon that'll be a whole week of <laughs> sorting that out once they're down. All right, so we might just adjust the tension in the chain and I'll give it a sharpen up as well. Yesterday we were just cutting through those small trees, so it should actually be fairly sharp. But I just want this to to go well, you know, so so we'll adjust the, the chain tension. Those nuts are about as quick tight as I can do with my hand. I like this chain. It's got a nice little gold link there that I can uh, I know where to start with with my sharpening. I don't know if this is going to sound heretical to some people, but when I'm sharpening a chain, um, a lot of the time people will say that they all of these cutters should be the same length. So that what will happen is the most damaged um, cutter on here, you'll, you know, you'll file it till it's sharp and then you get everything to exactly the same length. So whenever you're sharpening a chain, all your cutters remain the same length. I don't do that and the rationale be behind it is that that method of sharpening means that you're always, always filing your chain away at the... Um, point of maximum damage <laughs> which is the fastest way that you'll go through a chainsaw chain what I'll do instead is just make sure and it's easy with these this is a little husk line of chain guide what I'll make sure is just that everything is sharp and filed to the exactly the same angle and I'll just file till it actually feels right um, and then my nail yeah nice little bite come out of there I'll just make sure that all of the, the cutters are just filed till they're sharp and the angle is the same, which is easy with a guide, like I said. And that way, with the law of averages, every now and then, you know, different teeth along here will get damaged and you'll file it along. And pretty soon, like as you're filing, they all end up at the same length anyway. Whereas if you file it to the most damaged cutter every time you do it, you wear them away the quickest possible, which is great for Husqvarna because they get to sell more chains. Um, but it's not great for you. So 
Some people do it that way, that's the rationale behind how I sharpen them. Just make sure they're sharp and make sure that the angles are always consistent. With the file, I'm just going along until it feels like I can feel every tooth grabbing and I'm almost sort of just polishing that. Does it bite my nail? Yes it does, it's sharp. Hopefully if you don't go cutting into rocks or <laughs> fencing wire, um, you know, you shouldn't really need to do too much aggressive filing. And again, I sharpen this each time I do a um, put more fuel in the tank. I've seen some sharpening where they say, oh, you've got to hit the same strokes on every single, you know, every single cutter. Mm -hmm. But honestly, with the law of averages, because you're sharpening, you know, like so many times over the life of the chain, if you just make sure that you're sharpening the same angle every time, reflecting that angle. Well, basically with these guides, it makes it easy. You just, you just make it so that this stays exactly in the middle of all of that. Mm -hmm. And it does all that for you. It really couldn't be easier. So we've got a bit of an action view of dropping a tree here, and it's a little bit of an unusual technique. If you stick with us later in the video, we'll talk about exactly why we use this method. While I stood clear, Troy carried out a bit of a weight reduction on the tree so we could guarantee which way it was going to fall. A bit of weight reduction on that tree, like all on this side. We've left quite a few branches just on there because we'd like to like to drop it that way. Could have almost bloody just done nice cuts on all those limbs and sort of just left it as a really high canopy tree. Yeah. <laughs> just taking out all those leaves, but yeah, by the same token, all it would do is just keep getting taller and and eventually it'd have to be come down anyway. So. We, could, we should be able to get some nice poles out of these, these though. Look at that. There's some um, good pole there, there. I'll, um, might just get out of this gear. <laughs> I'm a bit more comfortable and then we'll, um, we'll just saw all this up, put some on a pile and, and see what we can salvage.
when that thing dropped it blew my hair like right back <laughs> first tree down a little bit little bit tricky with a with a tree that's so much wider than the bar you know the bar could only come in but the boring cuts in from the side just like I did with yesterday's leaning tree they matched up pretty well you know within five mil of each other quarter inch so that wasn't too bad so basically just bore in from one side bore in from another came in made sure that I had my um, hinge and you can see that all this wood where it was tore, torn out there was, a, there was a nice hinge there and that controls the, the fall cut back here pop my wedge in and then and and then cut the the back wood and she went down really really nicely so it was it was worth the extra precaution of climbing this tree this morning and just making sure that the the weight on the back I felt a lot more confident that that was done I guess it's not an avenue that's available to everyone is just to quickly climb a tree and <laughs> do a weight reduction but so that's that down um, I'd feel I a lot of these other trees are only like this round you know mm. they're not they're not a few ton so this was probably probably one of the more nerve-wracking trees on the block really feel relieved now this is on the ground it's always a bit nerve-wracking dropping a tree especially with a um especially with like a 20 something year break from any sort of tree climbing and timber work mm. good work baby mm, i'm an older man than i used to be maybe i'm a more cautious man so it's good Be nice to mill, wouldn't it? Mm. <laughs> I'm trying not to get wet, but there's rain blowing in. We got that done just in time. We got the the tree fell, and I think the rain has set in for the afternoon, so it's uh, chores inside. <laughs> Order is being restored, but it's definitely. Um, I'm glad we cancelled for a cup of tea. I can drink cups of tea in this weather. Good timing. I'm just going to clear out all of the poop from the um, chook pen. They've been in there, I mean, on and off. We've been free ranging them a lot, but they've been in that coop sleeping every night for about four weeks now. So there should be a good amount of manure in there. And um, we're just going to put that into the garden. And then, uh, well, the proposed garden, and then black plastic it for the time being. And then when we're ready to plant, we'll lift the plastic off and hopefully all the grass and all the weeds under there have a week in their roots by being um, not having any light on them. Together we secured the plastic with some of the fallen limbs of the trees that we just chopped down. This will stop it blowing away in any of the oncoming winter storms. Where we didn't quite have enough plastic, we broke up some old cardboard boxes and placed them down instead. Well, you might be able to see behind us that uh, wood chipping has begun. We uh, decided to hire a wood chipper to just break down all of the green leaves and branches from those trees that we've started falling. Hopefully, we've only got the hire for three days, so hopefully we can get some more trees down and get them through the tripper, the tripper, get them through the chipper 
Um, but as you can see, it really does break down um, and make all of that mass of leaf and branch into a much smaller pile. And then um, we're hoping we'll be able to use the wood chips around the place for paths and with the chickens and things like that just as a mulch. So yeah, we're just turning something that we would ordinarily have to wait to burn into um, a usable material for a little bit of money um, on the wood chipper. We think it's worth it and already the paddock's looking much better. We don't want tens of burn piles just around the paddock where we fall on these trees. So um, we're happy with the result. It's not the most ideal chipper. It's pretty small, but we're getting through it um, together. That tree, the height of it will be there. Huh. How do you know this? So, if we, um, if we have a triangle that's got both ends equal, all right, we know that we're going to have a 45 degree triangle, aren't we? 90 and 45 and 45. So you can pretty much get both sides of a triangle equal just just for rough squaring up on a on a tree to see where it goes by just getting the axe handle the length of your arm to your eye grab it there let it swing up and then just put your gloved hand where the axe goes in right where you plan to cut and look up so there's probably another couple of meters so the very very skinny part will probably come as far as here okay we want to sort of drop that tree down in here um, and then that, that last pile that we had to um, clean up, you know, we piled it because we didn't know we were going to chip. So ideally, as it comes off the tree, you run it through the chipper because piling it meant that we triple handled it really. Mm. Um, maybe even quadruple handled it because we both lifted it over there and then we both lifted it into the chipper, you know, with more cutting and stuff like that. I might just fuel up and sharpen the saw because it's gone all day without a nice bit of attention. Um, 3.30. 3.30, all right, well, we can definitely- Oh, four o'clock, sorry. Okay, we can drop that tree and get a start on it then. Mm. But there you go, I reckon it's gonna, the very, very tips will come to about here. Okay, see what where there is right. There's the tree. The third one along. When I actually cut that tree, I'm gonna I'm gonna be moving. And I'm just gonna keep going um, because I don't know this this middle tree has definitely got hang-ups in it. Because right? mm -hmm. I was looking at it before and I thought, oh, what we'll do is we'll get rid of the fence and we'll fall that that way, and that's all good. But there's widow makers up in that. Yeah, whereas the other one's clear. The other one's clear. I, well, as far as I can see, I can see one branch going across, but it's, it looks still sound. As soon as this tree wants to go, it's time to get out of here. It'd be nice if these trees were a little bit smaller. All of these trees are about this size and it's... They're big, man. They're, they're pretty big old tree, aren't they? Mm. So, again, what we'll do is We'll lay up a scarf. I don't, I don't want to hit that pile because that'll make our life hard, but I don't want to hit our garden. Mm. So I'll pretty much put my scarf out there. That branch might hit the garden, the first branch. Well, that's all right. I just don't want to climb it, you know? Mm.
Our, our distance, you know, like using the axe worked pretty well. I was quite high on the stump, you know, so I came up like about three quarters of a metre, you know, like two and a bit foot. Um, so that took it, you know, that, that brought it back a little bit, but as a, as a rough guide, you know, it, that works. So it all came down where we uh, expected it to. So what we'll do now is just, um, instead of limbing from the thick end up, we're actually going to work this way. We'll get all the thin stuff, throw it straight in the chipper as it comes off. These eucalyptus, um, for people that haven't been exposed to them, for the lucky ones that have never been exposed to eucalypts, they're what's called um, self-shedding. And what that means is they just drop branches all through their life, um, all over the place. They just peel out and come on down. And that means that they often have widow makers, um, loose limbs that are hung up in there. And as soon as the tree goes or something changes, they can come flying down. Um, and if they've got any leaves on them, that acts like the flight of an arrow. So they actually come down thick end, straight, like straight down. So good luck with your hard hat. So I got the, I got the hell out of there pretty quick. But um, that went pretty well. All right, so with this tree, when, when, we, when we dropped it, it didn't stay up on its stump, like the other ones have just fell there and stayed there. This one had a few branches that corkscrewed it and peeled down. So we can see here this one had, you know, uh, probably, I don't know, 50 mil. Okay, two and a bit inches um, step. Now we're, there's, the, there's the flat cut. Of the, hin uh, of the scarf there. So that's the size of the step up. I didn't want this eucalyptus to going back. Left a fairly good size hinge there. You know, like there's the hinge, it's all torn out now. So the hinge holds the tree from twisting as it goes. So, you know, the scarf is the opening. And as the tree goes, I like to try and get a, you know, like a something about 60, 70 degrees scarf. Some people like them 45 degrees, but I, you know, the, the tree falls 45 degrees and then it starts tearing out the hinge, whereas a more open scarf, I, you know, I, I like it a bit better. So maybe that's um, not so much my own opinion, but just what I learnt from other people. So yeah, there was the scarf. There's a nice big hinge. Obviously, as it closed, it tore all this out, but nice and thick, and, but it definitely did its job. Coming in from both sides, you can see I was an inch out there, but it didn't really matter. The cuts overlapped quite nicely. Um, and then, so dug the bar into here, cut around there, put a wedge, uh, a wooden wedge that I cut out from a bit of wood, um, came along here, tapped that wedge a bit more, and then cut that holding wood, and it got to that, and then that all peeled out and snapped, and, and then I could hear it going, you know, I could see it going, and, <laughs> but I was in a good position, you know, like the wedge was in, um, and as it went, I, you know, I could go like that, lock my bar, um, and there was a nice clear escape route. This tree here, we can get a better look at it now. This is a cork oak, you know, like wine bottle, cork. Um, it's, a, it's a good tree, like any leaves that drop off this aren't full of eucalyptus oil or any other sort of nasty resins. Um, and the soil underneath this, Passy was just saying before, she got in under there with the chooks before, and the soil looks actually quite good under these. Whereas under these gum trees, it's, it's it's not amazing um, and we can see that the grass is quite green there anywhere there's not gum trees <laughs> you know these things Really happy with our progress. Um, we've got the chip of one more day. We did. We had tried to hire it for a week. Kind of glad that we didn't hire it for a week. <laughs> We're feeling beat up. We really cleaned up a, that whole paddock, which is important because we want to run pigs through there, um, and we really want to clean that tree up because it's in our front yard or well, backyard. I'm not sure which yard it is. <laughs> so that's um, today's job. We'll do that, and then we've still got two big blue gums. So the plan for that is. Um, there's another one to drop across the paddock, but what we'll probably end up doing is clearing things to the side, um, just where the fence is going to run, and sort of live with it. Dropped in the paddock? Yeah, dropped in the paddock, and then I'll actually cut it up um, into firewood and just leave it there, and then by the time summer's finished, um, it should be pretty good. Can you live with a tree in the side I paddock? I think so. Right. 
Yes. <laughs> and this tree closest to the house, I'm going to actually have to climb, um, and then we'll we'll drop bits out yep. and figure out what we're going to do with that. She's got oh. hiccups. <laughs> She's like, it's the funniest dog. So I didn't film Troy getting that rope over the fork because he's got a sore shoulder and when we film things we tend to jinx ourselves and it doesn't happen for us. So yes we're a bit superstitious about the camera being on but he did make it over that fork. There's no other way he would have done it without throwing it and he did. Perfect throw. So I went to a little bit of trouble just to get it in that, that first fork there. I'm going to use spikes because eventually this tree will come out. I'll go up to there and then I'll wrap a flip line around, pretty much go all the way up. And I'm going to um, secure myself up into the top of this tree here. And then that'll let me come back down. The crux of the matter is I want to climb one tree only and just take a lot of this stuff out. I've only got the chipper for this afternoon as well, so I don't have a big enough bar. We measured it. I can't drop. <laughs> I can't just drop that other tree. But we can um, we can get sunlight into this garden in the meantime just by taking a lot of this out here um, and taking a fair bit of this tree just out. Exhausted? Not too bad. I think just sailing around the yacht, you, you don't get very fit, do you? No. Pretty good at breath hold diving and spear fishing. Not so good at climbing trees anymore. That other one that's going up there, off to the side, it's it's too tangled with the other tree and it might like fall and then spring into it or do anything, so I chickened out. Yep. It's just, Safety uh, first. Once that tree's fallen, then that'll be a much clearer just drop you know so we got rid of all the weight on this side anyway so it'll be a no be falling a, on the house <laughs> it'll be a fall down the paddock
Well, folks, we hope you enjoyed that one this week. If you haven't already, thanks for hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel, and we'll see you next time.